Good evening. Here is the news. It's Channel 7. Ba-na-ba-na. The place to be. Ba-na-ba-na. It's Color 7. And 7 is a very nice place for you to be. Ba-na-ba-na. You'll get the feeling. Ba-na-ba-na. You'll find the way. Ba-na-ba-na. Just try the sign. It's time to color your world every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Now, welcome back to Where Are They Now, where we are talking with some of Australia's most iconic newsreaders. Now, the nightly news took a new twist in the 80s. A fierce ratings battle between the commercial networks saw them reach for a secret news weapon. Sex appeal. <laughs> Well, first, Katrina Lee became the glamorous new face of a network news team. And then in 1987, Australian commercial TV went one better and got its first solo female newsreader. And she still reads the news on Channel 7 today in Melbourne. But her hair and outfits have changed a bit. A giant panda that performs circus tricks is likely to strain relations between Australia and China. The panda is supposed to fly here in December, but the federal government has so far twice refused a permit for the visit. Oh, they were great days with shoulder pads, weren't they? <laughs> Please welcome Jennifer Kite and her fellow news pioneer, Katrina Lee. Oh, there's more to come. Uh, yours was better than mine. That's a shocker. <laughs> Katrina, tell us about when you were reading back in 1978. Mm -hmm. And I sort of guess what it was like, what the reaction was like. It was amazing, as, as Margaret was saying. I mean, it was something that, uh, that, that hadn't been done. So everyone was thinking, well, what in the world they, have they dragged up here before the cameras? And uh, the publicity at the time was, was amazing. And I thought, well, I, you know, I'm a reporter. I'm not a newsreader. I'm not a presenter. I'm just a reporter. But they said, no, 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 you, you go on there. You'll be, you'll be right. You'll be right. Well, we started the bulletin and everything went wrong. Absolutely everything. It was the most disastrous bulletin that we, you know, I had seen. And I remember saying at the end of it, well, that's it for tonight. We're going home to practice and then we might be back tomorrow. <laughs> 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 Jen, you started out in a double act with Glenn Taylor and then the decision was made to go solo. Mm. What was that like? Well, it was a very nerve-wracking time because we were presenting together for a number of years and we were used to having solo females on the ABC, but no commercial network had gone solo females. So in 1987, the Seven Network said, we've decided to go with one reader and a lot of people came up to me and said, oh, I'm so sorry, this is terrible. <laughs> And I said, oh, of course, well, it'll be Glenn. And they said, no, actually, we're going with you. <laughs> and this was a bit of a milestone. It was a turning point, I think, mm -hmm. in commercial television. Just, just on that glamour, though, because, as we all know, you don't need to be an oil painting <laughs> as, as a bloke on TV. <laughs> <laughs> but, but as a woman, how important was it to have that glamour? Well, unfortunately, it was probably very important, much as we'd like to think that, oh, no, that, that was, wasn't what was really important. I know when I first got the job as the solo reader, the question by other journalists was, well, how long do you think you'll last? What's your use-by date? Because you're a woman. And it was constant. I said, well, hopefully we can follow the States and we can have a Barbara Walters or we can have maturing women on our television screens for some time. And no one asks me that question anymore. And Jennifer, you were a trailblazer again in 1990 when you read the news on uh, Steve Weizart Tonight Live show. That was a big one. We might have a look at you in action here. Move your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Move the legs. Move your legs? <laughs> I've got to explain something to you. I'm not real! <laughs> That had to be a whole new ball game. <laughs> it was a very dangerous move. There was much debate because at the time I was reading the six o'clock news solo and credibility is everything as we know as a news presenter. So you didn't want to harm the image. Now to go on to a variety show and try and do news with someone like Steve Weisard was a huge step and executives were very nervous. A lot of debate. Some said I think it'll be great because it doesn't hurt to see some personality from a news presenter and others said no it's it's professional suicide and i thought it was <laughs> it was scary it was i thought it was madness but it was great fun 
it was late night and I thought we can relax a little bit and the research showed that people actually enjoyed it and it actually I think added something to the six o'clock bulletin. The other thing that's uh, always been a quite a challenge to newsreaders is names you know practicing some good names there are some gems <laughs> Roger you uh, you had a, uh, you had to read a story with officially the longest Yes, uh, it was about it was about the um, it was about the uh, the Welsh railway station with the longest name, <laughs> and in actual fact, it was the last item of the night. And those so and sos in the newsroom did not give me the copy. Oh. I had therefore not read it. But what they didn't know, what they didn't know, was at the age of fourteen, I had stayed just outside that railway station, oh. and a local, a local, had actually taught me how to say it. Say it now. Oh. Say it now. So I picked the script up and said, and finally tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The Welsh Government has decided to sell the Welsh station, which is named Llanferpulc Wingri Gogri Quindrapel Llandisilio Go Go Go. All right, now finally, some good news yeah, stories. David, have you got a, a good news story that you remember? I think the one that um, caused the most reaction in the newsroom, I've never seen everyone in the newsroom jump up and cheer as one before, was when Stuart Diver came out uh, yes. from under the, yes. uh, under the collapsed yes. snow and huts in, uh, at Threadwell. Oh, yeah. that, that moment where he just looked up at the sky, <laughs> everyone stood up and cheered. Oh, yeah. James? James? Can I take you back to the time before television? when newsreaders had to make the pictures come from the words. Young Princess Elizabeth was on her way up to Australia and she was staying in South Africa for a brief overnight stop or a couple of nights. And they were billeted in a treetop hotel room. And we all know that uh, after bidding her father farewell in London and arriving in South Africa, she was woken the following morning by an equerry climbing up this ladder, going in, knocking in, and having to inform this young woman that her father had died and she was now Queen Elizabeth II. And so I had the feeling that I was going to tell all of Australia of this heartrending news, and yet uplifting in a way. Absolutely. The other thing with, with newsreaders is everyone seemed to have their own special sign-off. And Roger, you had the wink. How did that come about? I just felt that somehow a little wink at the end says, well, the world's still not too bad in spite of all that. And I did it a couple of times, and a couple of people said, oh, let's see your wink. I like that. And it became sort of a, a, a natural sign-off piece. Do it for Can us. You, come yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> Down camera one. Okay. This is Roger Clemson. Good night. Thank all of our newsreaders, James Dribble, Roger Clemson, David Johnston, Richard Moorcroft, Margaret Crosby, Katrina Lee and Jennifer Clark. Thank you all.